Did you know our brain makes mistakes when we fall in love? Big mistakes even. When we are dating, and especially during the early stages of a romantic relationship, our brain will for example think that certain things are totally true about the person we fell for, when in reality, <laughs> they absolutely are not. And as we will discover in this video when we go over some of the scientific evidence, women that fall for a guy they suffer way more from this rather strange phenomenon in their romantic relationships than men do. And that's not all. It are, of course, these very mistakes that will cause a lot of the frustrations you may feel while dating or a lot of the problems in a relationship. How I know? It's because I researched this stuff. I'm an author. I write books like these here about dating and relationships. My pen name is Brian Knox. My real name is Geert hence the pen name, and I help people to master their emotions in all areas of life. But when you know how to master difficult emotions and difficult feelings while you are dating, when you are in a relationship, and even when you are married, that's when a lot of the obstacles start to disappear. So let's dive in some of the scientific evidence first. And in case you're interested in that science, I will put some references to the studies in the notes beneath this video as well. Now, if you are a woman and you are watching this video, have you ever noticed that as soon as you made love to a man you liked, you liked him even more? Have you ever noticed that from that moment on, after you made love to him, his mere presence made you feel more relaxed, perhaps even safer? Or did you ever notice that you felt attracted to a bad boy, even though deep down you kind of knew he wasn't ever going to make you happy relationship-wise, but you still felt that strong attraction? Why is that? That's all because mistake number one, thanks to the neuropeptide called oxytocin. And that's the love and bonding hormone. When oxytocin is released in a woman's body, she will feel and create a bond with the very person that has triggered the release of oxytocin. So in this case, it can be the man she's dating, it can be the man she's in a relationship with, regardless of who that is. So even when this guy is bad news, as professor and Dr. Loretta Bruning once said, the oxytocin release will raise the trust you have in a guy. So in other words, you get the illusion that he's perfect even when he really isn't good for you. That's rather strange. And men don't suffer much from this. So oxytocin has a different effect on a man's body and that's one that you may even like. Because when you make sure that the man you are dating, the man you are in a relationship with, but even the man you are married to also get some oxytocin, well, that may make him less interested to even repulsed by other attractive women. Wouldn't that be great? And as proven by scientific research, by the way, and I'll explain how that works later on in this video as well, because obviously when your man is no longer attracted to other women, that could kind of be a bonus. Because make no mistake, oxytocin isn't bad for us. It's good for us. It can calm us down. It can give us great feelings. But we just have to be mindful of the side effects in our romantic relationship. So problem number one, as soon as you have been intimate with a guy and sometimes cuddling is all it will take, you get oxytocin. Now the oxytocin makes you idealize the man you are dating or the man you are in a relationship with, whether he's a great guy or not. That's the thing to remember. Because your mind will automatically start to trust him, start to adore him, start to love him more just because of the oxytocin. At that point, it has nothing to do with him or who he is. But that's not even the biggest problem. As you are having a great first date or a great second date or as the beginning of a relationship makes you feel safe and relaxed and, well, generally super happy, you get other hormones like dopamine and even some endorphins that feel really awesome. Let's be honest, falling in love and seeing that the other person loves us back, that's probably one of the best feelings our human body gets to experience, right? But all great feelings can be addictive. But there's a second problem. Our brain is designed in such a way that it will always need more to get the same level of happiness, the same love rush in this case. But that's really a problem in a romantic relationship. Here's why. This is what makes some women needier. As their relationship progresses, they sense that they start to complain, possibly nag a bit more. They may even feel angry for absolutely no reason at all. And they don't get it. Some even tell me, this isn't who I am. And indeed it isn't. Their brain is just making yet another mistake. Whereas their brain was at first super happy to be on a short 14 minute date with that attractive guy, it now needs him to be present the entire weekend with his full attention on her 
to feel the same level of happiness. <laughs> That's kind of a problem. Or what about that first, I love you? When he said that, it probably felt like heaven because she had been waiting for those words for weeks. And then he finally says it. She may even have gotten some goosebumps. But now, even when he says, I love you, baby, it may feel exactly the same as when he says, good morning. Yeah, whatever. Have you ever noticed that, by the way, how that happens? How things in our relationship that made us feel super happy and content in the past now don't even move the happiness meter an inch? So how do we deal with these mistakes then? Because I'm sure you can imagine they can lead to a lot of problems in a relationship and in a worst case scenario, even to a breakup. Now, the trick here is to realize that it always ends. And not the relationship, but the hormones. The hormones will end because nature can't keep those hormones of love and infatuation up for very long. It's too exhausting. So, we should stop looking for the high and we have to appreciate that the in-love experience will eventually end and then becomes one of real and stable, true, lasting love. If you have avoided mistake number one, that is. And here's how. Try to enjoy those first dates. So enjoy the feeling of being in love and the oxytocin with an open heart, but wait before you give him the stamp of approval, the relationship material or the husband material stamp. Wait. Wait until the fog is lifted, until your vision has returned, until you start seeing him for who he really is. And he can obviously be a great guy as well, of course. Before I forget, I promise to give you more information on how to make the guy you love be less than not at all interested in other attractive women. Well, a scientific study, and the link is in the notes underneath the video, has tested what happens when you give a man who already is in a romantic relationship with a woman a certain amount of oxytocin versus what happens when you give the same amount of oxytocin to a bachelor, so a single guy. Guess what happened? It had little to no effect on the bachelors, they didn't change, but the men that were in a romantic relationship with another woman, they all of a sudden avoided attractive women. They remained at a distance of those attractive women. And when an attractive woman was looking in their eyes, they often didn't even look back. They were less to not interested at all. Kinda great. Now, you may wonder, okay, cool, so how do I raise his levels of oxytocin? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to make love to him, obviously. You can also try cuddling him for an extended period of time, but I'm pretty sure he will have a slight preference for the lovemaking, so that's your best bet. So in general, the trick is to realize that the brain makes mistakes and that we often have to use our emotional intelligence. In other words, try to be the director of your thoughts and of your feelings. It's not because you feel or think something that it's the truth, especially in a romantic relationship. So explain that to yourself. Oh, I got a mega crush. It's probably because we cuddled last night. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. It can really be as silly as this. If you get that crush, does that mean he is your Prince Charming? Nobody knows. And your brain doesn't know either, even though it will probably think that it does. But only time can tell. When you have lived with him, when you have seen his full personality, when you got to experience all of his habits, the bad ones included. Are those beard hairs in the sink? Again? By the way, a man's eye has a very hard time seeing beard and other hairs as soon as they have left his skin, his body. They become invisible to him. I've tried explaining that to my girlfriend over and over again to no avail, but it's the truth. Anyway. I hope you liked the video. I hope that you will keep these mistakes in mind, especially when you get a crush, when you fall hard for a guy. Let me know what you think in the comments. You can also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos. And you can visit me on brianknox.com for exclusive videos and podcasts that I'm not posting over here. Just make sure to sign up to my mailing list. I want to thank you for watching this video until the end. I really always appreciate that.